Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Anne Reardon and this week we are going back in time to make 200 year old bomboons and pastilles or what we'd call lollies or candy. The cookbook I'm using is called The Complete Confectioner and it's written by Hannah Glass. Hannah was born in London in 1708 and sadly her mum died when she was only 16 years old. Soon after that, her dad also became ill, so Hannah was sent to live at her grandmother's house. In the same year that she moved there, she met and married a 30-year-old Irish widower, John Glass, which is where she gets her last name from, and together they had 10 children, five of whom died when they were only young. The couple were struggling financially, so Hannah decided to write a cookbook. Amongst the 972 recipes in the book, it had the first known curry recipe to be printed in English, an early recipe for ice cream, and she was the first person to use the term Yorkshire pudding in print. Her book, The Art of Cookery, was published in 1747, and sadly in that same year her husband also passed away. The book went well and it went to reprint the first year, but in order to support herself and her children, Hannah started a dressmaker's business along with her eldest daughter in Covent Garden in London. She even made dresses for Princess Augusta, the then Princess of Wales. Although her business looked like it was doing well, she had borrowed heavily and after seven years she couldn't repay her debts, so she was actually declared bankrupt and imprisoned for six months. Her assets were sold off and she was forced to sell all the rights to her book, The Art of Cookery. The book went on to become the best-selling recipe book of the 18th century, with more than 20 editions printed, and it was still being published well into the 19th century. Of course, Hannah saw none of that money because she no longer owned any of the rights to the book. She went on to write two more books, The Servant's Directory and The Complete Confectioner, the book we're using today, but neither of them were commercially successful. Not much more is written about Hannah apart from that she died at the age of 62 in London. And now 260 years after she sat and wrote out these recipes, we are gonna follow some of them today. To make nut bomboons, take a pound of Spanish nuts. Now I looked up Spanish nuts and it seems like this could have been almonds or it could have been peanuts because we've got someone with a peanut allergy in the house, I'm gonna go with almonds. Boil them in an iron pan and when they are well boiled, rub off their skin with a napkin. If some stick too hard, pare it off with a knife. Now I've never done this before and I must say I am surprised at how easily the skins just slide off the boiled almonds. I thought it would be much harder than this. And even though it is easy, it is time consuming because there are so many nuts and they all have to be separated from the skins that keep sticking to my fingers. Next it says, take a tin grater and grate your nuts very fine on a sheet of paper. Talk about time consuming to individually grate a pound of almonds. It's going to take me hours. I'm sorry, but I just have to use the food processor for this one. I am cheating just to highlight how blessed we are to have modern gadgets that can do something that would take hours in a matter of minutes. Then it says take a pound of powdered sugar to a pound of nuts and put it in a pan over a slow fire. When your sugar is all melted, in stirring it perpetually with a wooden spoon, put in your nuts. Personally, I have never liked making caramel with a dry sugar. It tends to clump for me and her recipe needs you to stand there stirring it for so long. Finally, it's all melted. And if I test it in a glass of cold water, you can see it sets immediately, which is what's called crack hard, but it tastes burnt. So I'm going to start again with the sugar because I don't want to waste the almonds and this time I'll start with some water in the pan and this will all just evaporate off so it makes no difference to the recipe, it just makes it a little bit easier. Stir it until it's dissolved and then brush down the sides of the pan with a wet pastry brush and leave that to boil unstirred until it starts to go golden and it's crack hard. Then the recipe says to put in your nuts and work them well till all is well mixed and pour it upon a tin plate. 
take a wooden rolling pin and spread it, which you must be very quick doing because it cools down very fast. To me, this seems like it's crystallized and gone hard as soon as the nuts were stirred in. There's no way that I can spread this out with a rolling pin, so something's definitely gone wrong. At the very end of the recipe, it says, you must take care the sugar should not be too much melted, for it is very apt to soften when the nuts are joined to it. So it looks like I'm gonna to have to start again. This time I am going to use store-bought almond meal. I am not be blanching and peeling my own almonds. Stir it just a little bit and then tip it onto a tray. Recipes are so much easier to follow with videos so you can see what it's supposed to look like or at the very least pictures. With just words, it's quite tricky. I'm gonna put another sheet of baking paper over the top because my antique wooden rolling pin is losing little splinters of wood and I don't want that in the candy. Next it says, when it is cold, cut it into what shape you please. It is pretty hard. I don't think there will be any cutting happening, but instead let me try smashing it. That worked much better. It has a fairly firm, compact texture and it's pretty good but it's a little bit overly sweet for me. I'd prefer just to have that caramel, crack hard caramel poured over whole almonds, that would be yummy. Next, to make the coffee cream bonbons. Take a pint of coffee made with water and put in it a pound of loaf sugar. Set it on the fire and boil it to a high degree. Then add a full pint of double cream and let it boil again. Keep continually stirring until it comes to a caramel height. To know when it has come to that point, you must have a basin of water by you. Dip your finger in it and put it quickly in your sugar and then into the water again to remove the sugar which will have stuck to it. What? There is no way on earth I am sticking my finger into lava hot caramel. The poor kitchen servants that read this recipe and tried that. Instead, I'm just going to use a spoon and get some of the caramel and pour it into the water in the glass. Now at this stage it's just turning into a liquidy mess so I know it's not ready. A few minutes later and it is starting to get stringy. Hannah's recipe says take a bit of it in your teeth and if it's hard in its crackling take it off it's to the height required. Now if I pull it out you can see it's not crack hard yet. It is a little bit softer than that but I know from experience that this will set into a nice firm chewy caramel at this stage so I'm going to pull it off now instead of heating it up to crack hard. There's nothing wrong with having it firmer I just like caramels that are chewy. Then she says pour it upon a tin plate and when it is warm you may cut it into little squares, lozenges or any other shaped pastilles and draw a few strokes over them with a knife. Now I've left it for about 30 minutes to cool and you can see it started to crystallize a little bit in the middle, but not at the edges. Let's just see if I can indent it enough so that I can cut it once it's cold. And you can see while it's warm, it's still very soft. But the next day, it's now set up to a really firm, chewy coffee caramel and it tastes awesome. You really should make some of these. Just don't stick your finger in the caramel while it's boiling though. <laughs> Now I'm going to wrap these individual ones in little foil squares. Now for a lemon pastille recipe. It says take half a pound of pounded loaf sugar, sift it as fine as possible. Now 200 years ago you could buy loaf sugar. It looked a bit like this. It used to be made in pottery moulds and the sugar would be compacted down into it and there'd be a hole at the bottom and they would keep pouring a small amount of sugar syrup over the top and it would run down through the sugar slowly and take out all the molasses, leaving you with a loaf of white sugar. So this is how sugar came from the shop and then they had to pound it up to get it smaller. Now in this recipe she says it needs to be as fine as possible so I'm cheating and starting with what we call caster sugar already and then pounding it. If you've watched any of my 200 year old recipes previously you'll know that I'm not very good with a mortar and pestle, it's not one of my strong suits. After five minutes of pounding my arm is sore and we have what I'd call a mixture between icing sugar and sugar. It's still got some grainy bits in there, but it's also got some really powdery icing sugar type stuff too. Next it says, 
Take three or four lemons, which squeeze over your sugar, mix it well with a spoon until you see it makes what is called a royal paste. A little thickish that you may take it upon a knife. Again, with no pictures, we can only guess what a little thickish means. I'm thinking it's about this consistency, but that only took one and a half lemons. Well, next it says, take half a sheet of paper and cover it with little round flat drops, which we call pastilles, of the size of a farthing. How many centimetres is a farthing? I found this on the web. <laughs> I was trying to find out how big a farthing is and look what Siri's come up with. Okay, that's not what I was looking for. Let me try again. How big is a farthing in diameter? I found this on the web. All right. Scrolling down, it's got the weight after the size. There you go, 20 millimetres, so about two centimetres or three quarters of an inch. I really want to pipe these to speed up the process, but there were no piping bags yet, so we're just going to have to drop little spoonfuls onto the paper. Then it says, place it in the stove with a slow fire till it is quite dry and take it off from the paper. You may add to it, if you choose, some of the skin of the lemon rasped or grated, but not chipped, for as it is a melting pastille, some of the bits would remain in the mouth, which is not quite so well. After being in a low oven for about an hour, they look like this. They're quite firm and they are very lemony and sweet. Pretty good, but the coffee caramels are definitely my favorite. With thanks to my patrons for supporting this channel, you guys are so awesome. I really appreciate you. If you'd like to join them, head on over to Patreon and check out the rewards there. Subscribe to How To Cook That and turn on the bell for notifications. Check out other 200 year old cooking recipes here, debunking videos here and giant chocolate bars here. Make it a great week by being kind to others and I'll see you on Friday.